Hey guys, Redman15 here, and welcome back to AI The Summoning Files. We are on episode 5. We're just going to continue where we left off from. Right, let's get a little recap of what happened yesterday, uh, last time. So, we went, we interrogated her, we went into her Somnium, found out some disturbing facts. I still think it's her mom. I think the killer is her mom. Date, could we make a stop first? I guess we're driving her back home. Sure. Where? Marble. It's a bar in Golden Yokocho. You know about that place? Yeah. Mr. Okiura took me before. Why do you want to go there? There's something I want to talk about. We can't talk here? It might take a while. What Interesting. There's no reason to refuse. Besides, there's a lot I want to ask her, too. All right, sure. Iris nodded and pulled out her phone. Is she sending a Nile message to someone? I was curious, but I didn't want to pry. I turned the wheel and drove to Marble. All right, we're on our way to Marble, I guess. See that? We're going to see Gorlock the Destroyer again. Marble, Sunday, 9.41 p.m. When we walked in, I didn't see Mama anywhere. Oda's there. To my surprise, I saw Oda sitting at the counter. He's sitting like that, bro. Damn, Oda. Tessa. <laughs> oh, Ota. Why you look like that? <laughs> I think Bros had a little too much to drink. Um, okay. where's oh. Mama? Oh, she left a little while ago. She said something about going to help an acquaintance. She told me to watch the place until she got back. Going to help an acquaintance? How well do you know Mama? Not at all. It's my first time here. I wasn't particularly surprised. Mama's always depended on the kindness of strangers ever since she opened Marble. No, this is my new one. You're thinking of the one I dropped in that puddle. Damn. New phone who dis? New phone who dis? I was Niling with Tessa earlier. She said she was going to Marble, so I got here just before you did. Looks like you got here a while before you did. You look uh, primed and ready for a fun night out. Look, I was really worried about her. She was about to be charged with a serious crime. No, she wasn't. You don't got enough evidence on her. This actually works out nicely. I want to ask you something, Ota. It's about a Nile message you sent Iris. You said you wouldn't tell anyone about that thing. That you'd stay quiet no matter what. What were you talking about? Well, uh... I'll tell her about the two witter thing. I swear I'll do it. <laughs> Jeez, fine. Just don't tell anyone else, okay? But before I tell you, who's that? Who's who? At the door. Someone's standing outside. Uh oh. Oh. Bro tased him. What? What? Ain't no way. Oda. How could he do this to me, bro? Ain't no way, blood said. Look over there. It tased me. Someone's standing at the door. All right, day four. Monday, 2.48 a.m. That's messed up, bro. What is blood trying to do to me? Come on, Oda. Can't be evil. When I woke up, I was lying on the sofa. Where am I? My head was killing me and my memory was foggy. I had a sudden pain in my neck. Ain't no way, bro. A monster staring back at me? What? It took me a few seconds before I realized it was just Mama. That's messed up. It looks like you're awake now. As Mama spoke to me, it all came rushing back. I remembered everything. So we get to arrest Oda finally, since he just uh, assaulted me. Or assaulted Dante, I should say. What the hell happened? Oda. 
the boy I asked to watch the bar? Yes. I'd say he's too old to be called a boy, but yeah. He was already gone when I came back. All I saw was you getting your beauty sleep on the floor. Damn it, Ota. What are you thinking? It appears that he took off with Iris. What were you doing during all this? My power was shut down due to the stun gun. I have rebooted in safe mode and am now operational. Damn, bro. What time is it? It'll be three o'clock soon. In the morning, of course. I tried. You wouldn't budge. I thought you were passed out drunk, so I left you like that. Damn. But I didn't have a glass in front of me, right? So you weren't drunk? Didn't have a single drop. Oh, I thought you were drinking straight out of the bottle. Just like the old days. Just like the old days. Well, unlucky for me, that's not what happened. Oh, pick up the phone! Date, the boss is calling. Oh, how am I going to report this one? Date, listen. Stay calm, but this is an emergency. Someone else get murdered. Just now, the killer... Well, just watch the video. Video? We got video Send footage? What? Wait, she's alive, though. Iris. But she's alive. Look. She just had her eye removed. That's it. But she's breathing. Okay, maybe it's not her mom. Oh. Never mind. She's not alive anymore. This no, is an emergency. The criminal is streaming this live. Iba, the source. Identify the Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. Okiura? Date, focus. We need to get to the site. I thanked Mama and ran out of marble. Bro, what did Oda do? What did Oda fumbled again, bro? I don't think Oda's the murderer, but he fumbled. What's our ETA? Our destination is far from here. Twenty minutes is the fastest. Please let me make it in time. I rip her eyeball. <sighs> that sick bastard. Who is that? No way, it's a Coca Cola polar bear. Oh shit. Oh yeah, she's dead. She's definitely dead. Well, can I get a rest in peace for Iris? Where'd the polar bear guy go? Stay away from Tessa. Oh, he's angry. Oh, he's going. Ah! Go to hold him off until I get there. At least he's fighting now. I kept, I kept my foot to the gas the whole time. I could feel the sweat on my palms. The engine raised a high pitched scream. But I could barely hear it. My heartbeat was pounding in my ears, shaking me to the core. How much time had passed. The feeling of time itself had disappeared. Eventually, the car reached a long bridge. Shortly after, the image changed. Hey, yo, where's Oda at? That don't look like Oda. Blood's reactivating the saw. No, it can't be. I think Oda died, bro. Okay. No. Oh, to save her. Stop. No! Oh shit. Well, I guess she's dead. Well, can we get a rest in peace for Iris? I didn't expect her to die. Hey, Mr. Polar Bear. Damn. Even I was speechless, bro. Damn, bro. Come on, Oda. How did you fumble? Unless it's Oda. Nah, it's not Oda. I. Uh, what's not her mom? Obviously not her mom. Because what mother would murder her child like that? There's no way it's her mom.
Monday, 3.35 a.m. Go, Dante, go! Run, 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 run! What the fuck? What? Okay, well, the polar bear's dead. Oda! No! No! Oda. Okay. I don't feel that bad about Oda dying, though, Luki. <laughs> Damn, bro. Uh, I didn't expect Oda to die either, but he died trying to save her, I guess. At least Cyrus is okay. Not like we can get any information from Oda, though. Like, why he tased us. There you are, finally. I was looking all over for you. It's rare to see you down like this. Bro, Oda was just murdered, bro. Of course I'm down. Understandable. It is. You blame yourself for this, don't you? Beating yourself up about taking Iris to Marble and about letting Oda get the upper hand on you. Bro, Iba? Why didn't Iba do anything? Think about it. Iba legit didn't say squat when Oda pulled out the taser. She could have she could have said something, bro. She got the awareness like that. Am I right? So I feel like it was done on purpose. Maybe Iba's the killer. That would be a crazy ass plot twist. Shall I tell you what Investigation HQ thinks? Ota Matsushita is a criminal stalker who committed murder-suicide. I doubt it. Ota had a selfish love for Iris. He was under the delusion that Iris loved him too. But Iris refused Ota. So Ota decided that he and Iris should be together in the afterlife. Killed her, then killed himself. Oh, she died too? Oh. Well, that not okay. What? Okay, so they're both dead. So that was real. Obviously, he wasn't the killer. That's ridiculous. Oto would never kill Iris. And how do you explain the other two murders? Iris's left eye was hollowed out. Just like Renju and Shoko. Those three murders were definitely executed by the same person. The new Cyclops killer. There's no way that's Ota. Too many pieces don't fit. Too many contradictions, like killing Iris. Such as? Stay away from Teta! Ota showed himself on the stream. If he was going to kill Iris and then himself, why would he do that? The only reason you would show yourself like that is to prove that you weren't the culprit. True. Ota and the polar bear on the screen at the same time would prove that they're not the same person. That behavior would be totally unnecessary if he was going to commit suicide anyway. Well, maybe he wasn't planning on dying at first. After he killed Iris, he realized that he couldn't live with himself. No, nah, but he didn't kill her. So he lies down on the workbench and turns on the ice cutting machine himself? I don't buy it. Maybe he was thinking like this. The reason Iris and I can't be together is because her agency prohibits it. Making the president, Renju, the ultimate bad guy in his mind. Okay, but why was Shoko killed then? Mizuki is Ota's close friend. Do you really think Ota would kill his friend's father? Exactly. Shoko was married to Renju. Maybe he was trying to get at Renju by killing her. No. That's a stretch. They've been divorced for years. Ota knows all about it. He wouldn't use Shoko to get to Renju. The culprit was wearing a polar bear costume, probably to hide their identity. But if murder-suicide was the plan, the costume served no purpose. There are some additional discrepancies. I analyzed the investigation report. 
Judging by his wound, Ota was stabbed in the side by a kitchen knife or something similar. So he was probably already dead before he was laid on the Are table. Sure? I am. Told the boss what Iva found. Oh, I know that. Well? Ota could have stabbed himself. Mm, I doubt that. Maybe he thought it would be a fatal wound, but when it didn't work, he went for the ice cutting machine. Nah. Then shouldn't we have recovered the kitchen knife from the scene? Maybe he threw it in the ocean. Boss, come on. Ota goes out to the water, stabs himself in the gut, throws the knife over the side, then walks back to the warehouse? Well, I wasn't being serious. I didn't think Ota was the culprit from the beginning. I was just playing devil's advocate for HQ. Really? Yes, really. Anyway, Ota didn't kill anyone, and he didn't kill himself. Here's what I think happened. Stay away from Teta! Ota knew Iris was kidnapped, so he rushed onto the scene. That's when he saw the culprit wearing the polar bear costume. He tried to fight him off, but ended up being stabbed in the side. He was weakened and losing blood at the culprit's mercy. The culprit forced him into the costume, then under the ice cutting machine. And then... He got cut in half. Got sliced up. This is a very unfortunate turn of events, bro. I'm not then, gonna lie. Who is the culprit? I wish I knew. We're up to four victims. But Ota was a special circumstance. He wasn't specifically targeted by the culprit. Right. And he was the only one to not have his eye pulled out. So let's focus on the three other victims. Either that or Iris is the killer and she faked her death. Not mention. Shoko, Renju, and Iris. What connects these three? Connections. If you find a connection between the victims, you find a connection to the culprit. That's the theory of investigation, right? Well, all of them were connected. In some way, shape, or form. You think the new Cyclops killer is related to them somehow? They have to be. Maybe, maybe not. That is a good starting point. Hey, bro, that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. It's, it can't be Mizuki. For sure. and Renju are definitely linked. They were high school classmates, and she did say that she met Shogo twice. But I can't imagine she would kill Iris in such a gruesome way. No. No matter what the circumstances were. It yeah. Seems impossible to I, I think the same thing too. Moma? Not Moma. It was not Moma. Shoko were connected to the Kumakuras. He wouldn't do this shit. But there's no connection to Iris. Maybe Oda's mother. That, that could be a possibility, but I doubt she would kill Oda. Mayumi had motive for killing Iris and Renju. Mayumi hated Iris, and she didn't think well of Lemnus Gate either. And since Renju is the president... Anyway, the weak point is Renju's ex-wife, Shoko. I can't imagine why Mayumi would kill her, and above all else, she would never harm her only son, let alone kill him. Wasn't Congressman either. I don't think it was Renju, him. Shoko, and So. There is a connection between Renju and Shoko through the Kumakuras, but again, I can't see any clear link to Iris. Yeah. No, it can't be the strongest the connections with all Shoko and Renju were her parents, and she was close friends with Iris. Unless her being at the crime scene the very beginning of the game was supposed to be kind of like a red herring to make her think that she wasn't the killer. I don't know, but I doubt she it. She was good friends with Ota too, but that's why I could never believe Mizuki would kill all four of them. Yeah. Thinking of her as a suspect is ridiculous. It could be me. Loki? Loki? Could be, could be Date. It could be Aiba controlling me, dude. We all know AI is bad. I know Renju and Shoko. And I'm connected to Iris, but I have an alibi. Aside from Shoko, there's no way I could have killed any of them. No. Now that I think about it, Shoko too. I don't remember killing her. My memories from six years ago are missing. But I still have my memory of recent events. And if I start doubting myself now... Date, I can say without a doubt that there is zero possibility you are the new Cyclops killer. I have been working with you for years. I know better than anyone that you are innocent. Yeah, but are you innocent? That's the real question. I don't know. It's all a little suspicious. It of the people I know, I can't peg any of them as the murderer. And no leads to pursue? No. Then there's only one thing you can do. Continue your investigation. Do whatever it takes to get the culprit. To get justice for the victims. 
You're right. Got it, boss. Well, I guess we're going to the gold storage. Might as well go to the scene of the crime. Gold storage warehouse, Monday. I stepped into the cold storage warehouse. The air conditioning wasn't running, but it was still cold. The temperature hadn't raised much at all. The cold air sunk into my skin, but the center of my body was burning hot. So we'll ask this fool. Uh, no, nothing so far. Inspector is doing his duties as usual. About the policeman. I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. A video camera and laptop. This is what the criminal used to stream. All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. There's Wi-Fi in this warehouse? The of Fishery Co. LTD is listed as the owner. However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. Damn. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras. The same Okiuras we know. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. So that's why this place was used. Okay. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju okay. holds no shares and is not involved in the management. But the killer probably used the scene because it was owned by... It's not owned by him, but... In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. Exactly. Right here. Iris and Ota were... I am sure you are already aware of Ota's time of death. Just before I arrived, about 3.30 in the morning. And the cause of death. Right, about that. Ota had a stab wound from a kitchen knife in his side. Correct. What was the exact cause of death? Was it the knife wound, or...? I cannot determine that. I can conclude that the knife wound was at least close to being fatal. Even if Ota was still alive on the workbench, he was certainly on the verge of death. If he weren't already extremely weak, we would expect to see more signs of struggle. Iris's estimated time of death and cause of death have been confirmed. The video was not a recording. It was a live stream filmed in real time. Which means Iris's time of death is 3.20 a.m. Damn, bro. If only I was 10 minutes sooner, quicker there. Dude, Oda actually got himself and Iris killed by tasing me. That's honestly insane. Oda, big time through. Holy. Maybe Oda was trying to help dry, uh, Iris jumping at the criminal. That led to a scuffle and Oda ended up with a knife wound in his side. He lost all his power to fight back. He was forcibly put inside the costume and finally cut open by the ice cutting why? machine. Why did the culprit put the costume on Ota? Unknown. This forklift is old. It does not appear to be functional. It has not been moved in some time. Iris also had her left eye removed. Yeah. And like Renju and Shoko, Iris's left eyeball has not been recovered. I feel like we haven't seen, we Captain, haven't met the killer yet. Moving. Officers from the local jurisdiction are checking the warehouse thoroughly. We will not find anything of importance here. Yeah, you're right. You can ask CSI to inform you if they find anything. All right. Well, I guess, where would we go now? Oh? When I left the warehouse, I saw Pewter. What is he doing here? What is Pewter doing here? He walked up to me as I was trying to work it out. Date, I have to talk to you about something. Huh? About the original Cyclops serial killings. Why this all of a sudden? Because I want you to solve this case, Mr. Date. True. I want you to find who did this and bring them to justice. So, if I can help you, even a little... Why didn't you say anything at Abyss? The boss was there. I couldn't speak openly in front of her. 
So I decided to meet you here. True. All right, let's hear it. Earlier, I told you that I was completely certain the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Okay. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer could not have committed these crimes. Okay. <laughs> I get it, yeah. Let me explain why. I'll start by telling you the identity of the Cyclops killer. Although, it's more accurate to say killers. More than one? Hmm. In the first series of killings, the culprit had an accomplice. So that's what I'm saying. Iris, bro. One of them was born a murderous psychopath. The other is Rohan Kumakura, the previous chairman of the Kumakuras. Really? Rohan was the original Cyclops killer? Yikes. They each had a role to play. Wow, okay. Uh, that would have been really good to know. The murderer committed the lot sooner, and Rohan removed the eyeball. Hmm. Hmm. That I don't know. The details of the original Cyclops serial killings case have become nebulous over time. Even the official investigation material contains nothing of value. I am unable to draw any conclusions from them. You really have no idea? If I did, I would tell you. True. 18 years ago, Rohan took a woman's eye. She was already dead. He put his finger into her eye socket and gouged it out. The reason why was simple. He was fascinated by women's eyes. Their beauty stimulated his greed and his desire to possess them. What the hell? He okay. He needed to have them. To make them his own. What? Driven by this instinctive impulse, he took the woman's eye. Okay, jeez. From then on, he acquired a grotesque obsession with the eyes of dead women. He was very particular about his need that the eye belonged to a deceased woman. But even being the head of a Yakuza gang, there weren't too many opportunities for him to indulge. His deepest, darkest desire went unfulfilled for years. However, he soon met his ideal partner, the aforementioned psychopath. The Cyclops killer would commit the murder, and Rohan would take the eye. Thus, a mutually beneficial relationship was established. This was the origin of the Cyclops serial killings. At about the same time, you were assigned to Abyss. He was born with a brain dysfunction. Due to damage to the posterior pituitary gland, he was unable to properly secrete oxytocin. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone linked to feelings of love, affection, and trust. Oh, he he couldn't feel love, affection, or trust. It okay. is colloquially referred to as the love hormone. It causes a tranquilizing effect which improves mood and relieves stress. Yikes. It is normally secreted when the body makes contact with an object of affection, such as an embrace or caress. I'm sure you know what this implies, but he was unable to feel love in the way that we do. However, he was able to experience a substitute. His brain was wired in such a way that allowed him to feel satisfaction through other means. EA murdering people. Due to the unique idiosyncrasies of his brain, he was able to release large amounts of dopamine and endorphins by performing a certain action. What was it? Killing people. Murder. Exactly. Dopamine is a hormone linked to the reward system of the brain. The pleasant feeling attained through accomplishment is dopamine. Endorphins are a kind of brain narcotic. They dull pain and create a feeling of happiness. He got pleasure from killing people? It's slightly more complicated than that. Killing people was the only way he could get pleasure. Damn. He was 12 when he took his first life. 12? Damn! That enlightened him to the pleasure of murder, which he would do again and again. So who is he? The me? Cyclops killer had an accomplice. There were two Cyclops killers. And one of them was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Rohan committed suicide by jumping to his death one year ago. That means... Pewter. Tell me this, one of the original killers is dead, I know that. 
That means one remains. Who is he? After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. They actually picked him up on other charges. But, in any case, he is currently serving a life sentence in Fuchu Prison. Fuchu Prison? Yes. What's his name? In prison, he doesn't have a name. He is simply called Number 89. Number 89? I know who killed Shogun Adami. Mmm, it was the dude who called it in. So, now you know why I said that. That the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Because one is dead, and the other is behind bars. Maybe Rohan faked his death. Neither of them had the opportunity. Well, where are we going now? Well, I guess we should go, uh... Let's see, that's uh, Iris's house, right? Sagan re residence? I guess we should just go to Matsushita Diner. Go tell the poor old lady that her son is dead. I guess. The place was silent. It was so quiet, I felt like I could hear the floating dust. I stepped inside. I thought it was empty, but I saw a shadow in the corner of my eye. It was Mayumi. It was like watching a decaying old tree cling pathetically to the earth. Condiments. Interesting. This is your fault. It is not my fault. It is so. I'm sorry to tell you, but, like, it's actually Oda's fault. <laughs> um, he literally got himself killed, bro. I heard from the police because you didn't take care of Iris. No, it was Oda. My boy Oda got involved. No, Oda is the one who got himself involved and then he got himself killed. I'm sorry. Sorry, so, sorry, to, sorry to tell you. I looked into the investigation report. Mayumi confirmed Ota's body early this morning. I see. I'm sorry. I want to be alone right now. Did you not hear me? I said leave! <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. I need information. Date, let's go. She is in no state to talk. Yeah, you're right. Okay. I will return momentarily. I guess we'll go back to my place. We need to ask, we need to ask Mizuki some questions. Mountain day. Where do I live, bro? What is this warehouse? Mizuki is curled up on the sofa. She looked like a small animal frightened by a predator. Dude, what are these descriptions? Holy crap. Yeah, she's not going to be talking. Mizuki must know about Iris Nota. Of course. The news was distributed heavily across the internet. Not just in Japan, but worldwide. Three days ago, Mizuki discovered her mother's body. Two days ago, her father's. This morning, two of her best friends. Damn. Yeah. It is completely understandable that she is at her mental limit. Can I be left alone for a while? Are you okay? Yeah. Certainly didn't seem so, but I can't stay by her side forever. Aiba, contact Abyss. See if they can get Mizuki a good counselor. Understood. I stayed with her for a little while, but we didn't speak. Having nothing more to say, I left. Alright, well... <laughs> We gotta make our rounds. All right, we're gonna need to play, pay close attention to the mother's, to the uh, the mother's uh, uh, behavior. That's the word I'm looking for. When I visited the Sagan household, I found Hitomi. He told me with a hollow look in her eyes. She left. She let me in and asked me to sit on the sofa. I agreed and sat down. But after that, I couldn't say a single word. The heavy silence weighed on both of us. Iris was my everything. 
We always went everywhere together, whether it was buying clothes or going to the movies, or taking a walk, or going shopping at the supermarket. When she was young, she would just hold one of my fingers. Her hand was too small to hold mine, and it was two, then three, and finally she could hold my hand. But eventually, she left my hands altogether. She started crossing her arms, being independent, even though she needed constant attention growing up. Yeah. And now she did. I didn't click on that. Her memories are a part of this room. And always will be. When she was a baby, she fell off that sofa and cried and cried. One day, she tore up her picture book all over the floor here. Another time, she drew with crayons all over the window. She painted my portrait on Mother's Day. Scratches on the floor, chipped plates, burn marks on the table, stains on the cushions. Everything you see. It all holds a memory of her. But... Why? Thanks. Oda was one of my students. He was one of your students? I taught him in elementary school. Well, that links her to Oda, I, I guess. From the police. Oda tried to help Iris and ended up... I don't know what to say. I have no words. Hey, tell me. My entire focus is on this case. Is there anything at all you can tell me? I don't know if this is important, but... No, please. Tell me. I may have told you this already. I met Renju's wife Shoko twice before. The first time at the wedding, the second time a month ago. That second time was in the waiting room of the prison. Prison? Prison? There's an acquaintance of mine from when we were younger. I visit them a few times a year. And by coincidence, I saw Shoko. Don't think she noticed me, but I recognized her as Renju's wife right away. She was there for the same reason I was, to visit one of the inmates. What inmate was she visiting? Do you know who? No, I don't. We didn't talk. Which prison? Fuchu prison. In oh. Tokyo. That was a very important piece of information. Okay. Fuchu. Prison. Hmm. We're connecting the thoughts. I'm sorry to have bothered you. I'll be going now. We need to go to the prison, bro. We need to talk to number 89. I don't know what to do. Thinking about her. Dante, please, you, you, you have to catch them. Oh, I'm gonna catch them, all right. And I'm gonna please, do things please. to them. Please. Don't worry about what I just said, Will. Trust me. All right, Dante, you can't screw this up. Why does blood wear gloves? Purple gloves everywhere he goes. I guess we're going to marble. We'll ask Mama some more questions. Okay, well that was a good, very, that was a very good piece of information. So Shoko, everyone is linked in some way, shape, or form to each other. And. I don't know, this shit is very confusing. I'm not a, uh, I'm not good at Are you okay, being a detective. Thankfully, uh, I'm not the main character, so. About last night. Well, at three in the morning, anyway. You know about it? It's on every channel. Maybe Mama's the killer, bro. Imagine that. You have the face of a ghost. Do you want a glass? I don't need a drink. I need information. Do you have anything? Well, let's see. I do have... I suppose you could call it intuition. Tell me. The Kumakuras are involved in this case. 
Remember what I told you before? That there's a relationship between Ren and the Kumakuras? The killer could be someone from the Kumakuras. Probably not Moma, but they have to be involved in some way because they are connected heavily. Shoko also has a relationship with them. You know about her dealings with the Kumakuras, right? So basically, two of the victims are linked to the Kumakuras. That must mean they're involved somehow, right? Not two. Three. So Iris. Three. Iris? No, not that one. Ota? What did Ota do? He came here last night. Ota? Yes, from Matsushita Diner. He's linked to the Kumakuras as well. How? Have you heard the rumor? Mama told me a similar story to Aiba's about So Sojima and the Kabasaki district. The basic idea is this. Eight years ago, So sold his land in the Kabasaki district for 30 billion yen. Half a year later, an explosion at the chemical plant caused the land prices to drop drastically. So bought back the land for 1 billion yen, basically making 29 billion yen and still having the land. Almost like he knew beforehand that the accident would happen. Did So blow it up? Or conspire to blow it up? No, that wouldn't make sense. So wouldn't gain anything from that. He would end up with 29 billion cash and 1 billion in land. Well, he would gain something from it. He'd have, he'd pay 1 billion for the land he just sold for 29 billion. So he still has the land. And he could just wait until the district reopens and then sell it again. It's a net zero. It's not though, because he has the cash. There's more to the story. Ah, okay. The Kumakuras own a handful of real estate companies. They, of course, look legit, but they're Yakuza fronts. I'll call those real estate companies the KE to keep it simple for you. The KE followed in So's footsteps. They bought up land in Kabasaki. Now, back to So. Have you heard of the plans for the casino in Kabasaki? A casino in Kawasaki? So was the one who came up with it. Hmm. I was born and raised in Kawasaki. I remember the landscape of my childhood, and I loved it dearly. But look at Kawasaki now. When I see images of the destruction on television, my heart aches like it's being chopped to pieces. But I promise you, I will revive the Kabasaki district at any cost. Casino Town Kabasaki will give new life to the city. After that, So moved fast. He submitted the bills he needed to the National Assembly after drumming up support in the right places. The bills passed and it became an official government initiative. Decontamination efforts therefore increased at a rapid pace in the Kabasaki district. At the moment, the area is still considered off limits. However, the air in Kabasaki is currently purified to such an extent that it has no negative effect on the human body. If the plan goes smoothly, land prices in Kabasaki are going to skyrocket. Yeah, in which case, the land he bought for 1 billion yen is going to be sold for a lot more billions, bro. And all that land is owned by the KE and by So himself. The land he bought back for 1 billion will be worth 10 times that soon. Exactly. He's involved in some shady business. This is just another rumor, but the chemical plant exploding was no accident. It was done intentionally. You still haven't told me about Oda. By So and the Kumakuras, you mean? But there's no hard evidence of that. It's just gossip. What about Oda? Uh, what were we talking about again? Ota and the Kumakuras. Oh, right. You know how Matsushita Diner is close to the Kabasaki district? Very close. The chemical plant explosion made times hard. Foot traffic went down, sales declined. No wonder it closed down. Ota must hold a grudge. Hmm. Someone caused that explosion. And if it was intentional, oh, he'd hate them even more. That's how I link Ota to the Kumakuras. Okay. I thought he was like involved with them, but he actually wants revenge for him, or he wanted revenge. Thank you, Mama. 
I don't know if what you told me will lead to anything, but... Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to waste your time. No, no, it was good information. No, no, it was very helpful. I'm glad I can help, even if it's just a little. Well then, be seen. Come back anytime. I think we should go to jail. Oh, we're going to back to Abyss, okay. We need to head to the jail, though, as soon as possible. We need to ask that fool some questions. A lot of questions. Why was Shoko visiting him? I returned to Boss's office to report. Maybe Boss is the murderer, bro? Imagine that. But I didn't see her anywhere. Where did she go? Well, she isn't always here, correct? True. Sat down in my usual seat and decided to wait for Boss. What are you doing? I thought it would be easier to talk like this. What do we have to talk about? A summary of the investigation, perhaps? What summary? We don't have anything new. We have lots of new information. What are you talking about? That's not true. It was very not true. I was curious, so I did some research about number 89. Okay. Unknown. I cannot determine if they have any connection. Approximately one month ago, Hitomi Sagan witnessed Shoko in Uchi Prison's waiting room. I am unable to say for certain that the person she was there to visit was number 89. After all, Uchi Prison houses 2,000 inmates. But number 89 knew Shoko's name. I know who killed Shoko Nadami. Yeah, but she was on news reports. It must mean that he knew her somehow. It is possible. As you know, he is an assassin with multiple confirmed kills. He is currently serving a sentence at Fuchu Prison. He was imprisoned six years ago. That's what Pewter told us. After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. Okay. What's his real name? Unknown. Unknown? You don't know? No such person is listed in the family registry. It is possible he is a foreigner, but his nationality is unknown. Precisely However, why we need to visit him. I believe it is safe to say that he was born and raised in Japan. Pewter claims that there were two culprits behind the original serial killings. One was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. But Rohan committed suicide last year. That leaves one culprit still alive. Number 89. But number 89 couldn't possibly have committed these crimes. He was in jail when each of the murders occurred. Correct. However, I do not believe it is accurate to claim that he had nothing to do with the incident. Could have been in communication with the real killer. I know who killed Shogun Adami. Exactly. If he was telling the truth, his involvement is possible. Exactly. Exactly. Let's talk to number 89. Exactly. That's what I've been saying this whole time. I don't know if he's telling the truth or if he's full of it. He's our last remaining loose end. All right. However, we need not go to him. We can bring him to us. If we plan on sinking with him, it would be more efficient. True. Can you arrange that? I can. That's a W. Cutting through some red tape, 89 was brought to HQ. He took considerable time to arrive, but for some reason, boss never showed up. Dude, where is my boss? What is he doing? Monday at 8.56 p.m. Who is this? Isn't this the fool we saw in our dream? Look at this fool, bro. It's evil looking. Sorry to interrupt your busy day, but I need you to tell me something. I'd appreciate your cooperation. Number 89. Your real name. I don't remember. Doesn't remember. Where are you from? Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso is a republic in West Africa. Population 17 million. He's not from I don't there. have time for your jokes.
Yeah, I guess I do. About a month ago, Shoko visited Fuchu Prison. Was she there to see you? That's right. Why did she visit you, What did though? you talk about? Nothing special. You're in no position to lie. I'm not lying. She didn't come to hear me talk. Then why did she come? To meet me. Meet you? She probably just wanted to see me. I'll ask him this first. That's right. I was one of the culprits behind the case six years ago. One of the two Cyclops killers. A long time ago. I don't remember exactly when. What's your relationship to her? A physical one. Physical? That's kind of what I thought. I'm kidding. She was just a business partner. Wow. I could imagine physical. Wait, what? What am I saying, bro? I need to shut up. Who killed All her? Alright, let's get right down to it. Two days ago, you called Investigation HQ and said, I know who killed Choko Nadami. That's right. Who? Hey, don't be so hasty. We haven't agreed on a deal. Deal? You're gonna let me out of prison, right? <laughs> no. It's done. You've got a deal. You... Dante, what are you saying? You can't let this fool out of prison. This one needs to be executed. But to explain it properly, I need to tell you a story. Oh, it might boy. take some time. Is that all right with you? I've got nothing but time. Then let's get started. The story of a lonely assassin. Once upon a time, there was a detective full of righteous justice. Let's call him F. F found the evils of the world intolerable. You're talking about, uh, Light Yagami? F had no parents, no, no. siblings, and grew up in an orphanage since We're talking he was about, born. Bro, this is L. It's, le it's legit L. Or one of his, uh, orphanage friends. I don't know, bro. It's L from Death Note. It has to be. He suffered every kind of abuse imaginable. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Led him That's to all. despise all the evils of the world. That's all. One day, F was chasing a thug down at the harbor. Someone wanted for the assault and murder of women. Okay, I get it. I'll just throw down my knife. Here. And you lower your gun. I'm assuming that's uh, number 89. That's I got nothing else on me. I'll go quietly. You know, I have a history with hospitals. I've been going to a special hospital for a while. Even if I get caught, it's all good. I'll come right back out again. What should I do next time? Just thinking about it gets me excited. And he kills him. Oh, he 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 mag dumps him, bro. The culprit was unarmed, but F never served a day in prison. The case went to trial for some time, but it was determined to be self-defense, and he was declared innocent. If the truth got out, it would be a huge scandal for the police. People at the upper level were terrified of what might happen, so they had evidence fabricated. F wasn't suspended or disciplined at all. After a while, he returned to his job like nothing happened. Interesting. That was a turning point for him. Talking about me? He was ready to shed the morality that was weighing him down, holding him back. F still wanted justice, and he was willing to dispense it to the immoral one by one. He became an assassin, a lone gunman. No agent, no employer. He was his own man. F believed that he was judge, jury, and executioner. Okay, let you got me. But it didn't last long. One day, F got rid of a criminal we'll call X. X was responsible for defrauding and killing an innocent old man for his life insurance policy. Damn. Turns out, X had connections. Someone wasn't happy that he died. Rohan Kumakura, chairman of the Kumakuras. X was a top executive of the Kumakuras at the time. Rohan ordered his men to find and kidnap F. Okay. I've done some research. I know you've cleaned up at least 18 pieces of scum from this earth. But somehow there hasn't been a single criminal investigation. They're all treated as suicides, accidents, or natural causes. Amazing work. 
I'm impressed. How about you work for us? Of course, you have the right to say no, but it'll be the last word out of your mouth. F was trapped. Even if he somehow survived, he would be looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life. He had no choice but to take Rohan's offer. Thus, F's self-employment came to an end. He became a hired gun of the Kumakuras. Rohan even gave him a code name, Falco. Falco? Named for the falcon, a bird of prey. What if he got named Falco? This dude from Attack Falco on Titan? Falco quit his job as a police officer, though. He worked as a detective by day, assassin by night, at the will of the organization. An ordinary killer would need motive to take a life, but not Falco. He did as he was told, one target after another. It didn't take long to destroy his heart completely. Time passed, and a few years back, Falco, who by this time was exhausted in body and spirit, made a fatal mistake. He missed his mark and ended up taking a bullet to the stomach. Somehow, he managed to escape. After reaching a nearby shrine, his legs finally gave out under him. He had no strength left. He put his back up against the shrine and let out a moaning breath that he thought might be his last. But at that moment, in his darkening vision, he saw a woman approach him. He watched her take out her phone and dial for help. At the same time, he heard footsteps, footsteps of at least two people closing in. He knew immediately that they were after him. He sprung into action, grabbing the woman and pulling her close, kissing her to keep her from talking. Okay. That was the first encounter between Falco and the woman. She was a teacher at some school. Oh no! Bro! It is Iris's mom! Well, I mean, I'm not saying she's the murderer, but... Oh no! It was like she was from a totally different world than him. Listening to her talk, he would forget everything about his line of work. She was his only contact with the ordinary, mundane world. They met in secret a few more times, and Falco felt his heart grow warmer. Her smile and kindness were like a cold glass of water for Falco's parched heart. Falco started to become himself again. His former self, he swore on his life that from then on, he would live for her. So, you want to go clean? Fine. Do as you please. You've done a lot for us, but there is one last thing. One last thing. One final job I want you to do for me. It's nothing major. This woman and her daughter. I need you to dispose of them. Should be simple, no? Guess who the woman and her daughter was. Rohan handed Falco a picture of a woman and a girl. It was the teacher Falco met at the shrine. And her daughter. She had just turned 12. Why the two of them? Rohan, as usual, never gave a reason. And Falco had no intention of carrying out the kill. But if he didn't, he knew that someone else would. He thought long and hard. How is he going to keep them safe and get out of the life of crime? He couldn't find an answer. No matter how hard he thought, he was backed into a corner. So, he decided to call on an old friend for help. And then... Silence. For some reason, he wouldn't open his mouth again. That was a very interesting story. Well, like, you gotta finish it, bro. What's the connection between that and Shoko? Why did you stop? It's not talking. Was that the whole story? You mentioned a detective. 
Hey, answer me. This is a transaction, remember? Until I get a guarantee that you'll uphold your end of the bargain, I'm not telling you anything else. I'll give you half up front, half later. <laughs> if you want to hear the rest of my story, you better start the release procedures. Once they've cleared, I'll tell you everything. Damn. Date, it is unlikely that number 89 will uphold his promise, even upon release. Pewter. Yes? Start the preparations. For what? What do you think? <laughs> the sink. The sink. We're gonna go in, bro. I have injected number 89 with the usual dosage. He will not be waking up anytime soon. Are you ready, Agent Date? Yeah. The time limit is six minutes. I know. Then let's begin. It's the room again. Sup? No, not sup. Why are you sleeping on the job? Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here. We had some crazy things happening in this episode. I'm not gonna lie. Crazy stuff. I have no clue who to suspect right now. It could honestly be a whole bunch of different people. I still think Shoko, or not Shoko, Iris's mom plays a big role in something here. I don't know. It's a lot to unpack, but we're going to get to the uh, the sink in the next episode. So yeah, if you guys want to see more episodes of AI Slime and Files, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. I'm Murderman15, and I'll see you guys later.